Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. You may notice I'm here in front of the world's most powerful forklift. Or maybe the world's fastest. That hasn't even been determined yet. But uh, probably the most powerful anyway. I don't, don't know that I've found any over 400 horse forklifts out there rolling around in the world. But I got one thanks to Area Diesel Service who did the pump work and uh, cleaned up my injectors and assembled them for this A3 Cummins I built for this thing. So I got in contact with them uh, six months ago or maybe more. Uh, as you're probably aware there's uh, supply chain issues in the United States right now as far as getting stuff. So a lot of these parts were back ordered for a long period of time before they were available, the particular ones that I wanted. And if there's interest in how I went about deciding what I wanted, there's a little math involved, uh, a lot of previous experience involved, and a little bit of playing with some computer programs involved. But anyway, remains to be seen if uh, what I think it's gonna do is what it winds up doing. But uh, only one way to find out is to get to it. So, call my buddy Curtis at Area Diesel Service and told him the parts that I was interested in. And they got them on order for me. And I've got some other parts too. Uh, these are just common three and a half inch exhaust components. These will be the inner stage piping for my setup. Uh, goes with this John Deere heavy duty intercooler boot. Uh, I want flex in it, so I don't want it totally hard piped, but I want it as hard piped as possible. So there's less places that it can blow out. When you start making big boots, uh, it can be a big issue blowing boots out or blowing them off or whatever. So the fewer places that that's possible, the better in my book. But you still gotta have flex because all this stuff moves with heat and whatnot. And this is not a race setup. This is a daily driver setup slash tow rig setup. So we're going for usable horsepower and street friendliness with this setup. I like instant response. Lag pigs are not for me. So, uh, you may have already seen a video on Area Diesel's page doing the machining for the exhaust housing for this turbocharger because it's a configuration that can't be bought unless you contact somebody like Area Diesel and tell them what you want and then of course it can be bought because they can make you one just like what I got. And then in this box, we've got the assorted goodies. So we'll kind of go through it first. Got some swag here. I had to re commandeer it for this video. It had already been snagged. As soon as somebody else opened the box, they were like, Ooh, I want that. So I'll have to give this to his new owner. One of the reasons why this particular kit or configuration I did is a little different than usual and that's because I have this cast elbow. Uh, this comes from diesel power source I think or diesel power system DPS if you look them up on the internet. And this is a casting that they have done that goes from the uh, stock third gen style manifolds. So this is a bigger than HX40 flange, although they also have these with HX40 flange. But I wanted the bigger flange for what I'm doing. Uh, I think it's more stable. And then it's T6 foot, so this is where the issue came in with uh, this. However, truthfully, there's a little bit more behind this than just the flange but uh, I'm not gonna get into that. That's uh, knowledge up here. But uh, 
So that's the reason why I need a T6. Uh, this header wrap goes on that so you don't melt your heater box. So that's the hot side interstage piping. And we've got clamps for that, clamps for the intake flange. This is the water weld to these pipes coming off the turbocharger. I'll skim that down a little until it'll slip up in there. That'll make welding that out nice. So this flange, um, these flanges and clamps, this is all part of the Axis turbocharger stuff available from Area Diesel. That's a five inch downpipe. Fits the exhaust coming out of the low pressure turbo. Clamp goes with it. And the weld on ring for the low pressure turbo for the compressor side to make it hook up. To the flange that attaches to this. Yeah, this and this go together. So that'll be the connection at the low pressure turbo. And then go to this piping into that hose, into the face of the high pressure turbo. And the high pressure turbo uses the standard factory configuration coming out. So that's what it'll be for now. If I have a lot of problems with blowing apart, I'll address that as need be in the future. But for now, this should get all that plumbed up, squared away. Uh, this bracket stuff goes on the exhaust manifold and hangs down. And hooks to this to help support the weight of the low pressure turbo because it is 43 pounds according to that and that's uh, without the exhaust housing so basically a 50 pound turbo hanging on the side of the engine and just hanging it off of the piping is not the greatest especially long term and you know, might get by for a race truck but long term beating down the highway you probably break up the piping so again that's where this nice piece of cast iron comes in is it can take the heat a whole lot better than any sort of piping that I can fabricate up. In the past my twin setups have been uh, fabricated pipe but this one's going to be a more uh, higher duty cycle than typically what my twins see because usually those are race trucks and they don't get a lot of run time but this is going to get a lot of run time so this is the route I chose to go. So that pretty well goes over everything it's going to take to get this hooked together. So that's the plumbing side of it that is all my responsibility to make work. And over here we've got an S300G, which is a box stock off the shelf turbo anybody can buy. These are an excellent upgrade, I think, for a street truck over an HX35 anyway. They don't quite blow as much air as an HX40, but they don't have the lag of an HX40. How do they compare to an HE351? I can't say. I've never seen anybody run one head to head and actually do any testing on that. So I guess that's one of those things you just never know. Uh, these are a more robust turbocharger than uh, an AT351 is, I think. Although they're really tough. Now, these S300s are pretty tough too. And this is the Beatty S300. Got the small compressor cover in the S3 family. However, the, this particular turbocharger has a very high pressure ratio map in this frame class of turbocharger. And what that means is it's good at making cool air at high boost pressures, which is important because 5912 valves don't flow a lot of air, so they need more pressure to make power 
then they need air flow. So putting a big turbo on that flows a lot of air like a 66 is usually not, in my opinion, a good solution because unless you're revving it way up, it's not going to have any power because the flow isn't there to take advantage of the compressor. So you're not going to push that 66 like you can in 57. So you're not going to have 1200 RPM boost with a 66, but you can have 1200 RPM boost with this charger. So that's what I'm after, particularly with my 307 gears. My truck runs very little RPMs, and we're trying to get 20 miles a gallon because even after the injector change I did a while back, I'm stuck right there at 19. I haven't been able to do any better average than that uh, driving around in the hilly part of the country where I live. If I was in flat of Indiana or Illinois, I could easily break 20. Uh, but it's hilly around here and it takes more fuel to go up and down hills. That's going to go on the manifold. And I may just, just for testing purposes, throw this on strictly as a manifold and run it because I have the ability to do that being that this is a direct bolt on just to see how much of a difference it makes over the 35 before I flip the manifold and put it in a twin kit. So should time permit, that'll be what I'll do. I'll try it and then I can report how it works. And that brings us to the power maker here. Or the key to lowering the EGTs. It's low pressure turbo. This beauty right here, this is SXE 472. And according to the calculations I've come up with and looking at the compressor maps, this is the best match airflow wise to the 57. So this thing should be happily in its compressor map. Uh, for the airflow that I'm looking to get out of this engine. So for a 5, 9, 12 valve, even if it was a 6, 7, uh, this would still be happily in its map. With the 5, 9, it's towards the bottom end, and with the 6, 7, it's towards the other end. So if you had a 6, 4, it would be like perfect right in the middle. So I got to machine this flange and put the weld on piece from Harry Diesel on here that'll make my flange connection so instead of having this hose out. So I got a machine now on here. And then they've already done this exhaust side for me. So you can see the video on how they did that using modern machinery and CNC and a CMM to develop the contour and go in there and cut it out and make it match, just like factory. If you watched my videos for very long, you've seen me do that as well, doing it the manual method, and they did it the much faster and re more repeatable CNC method. Doesn't require near the uh, amount of operator skill as to blend it by hand. So that will nicely do the job. Downpipe will hook up on there. This should mount up down low on the side of the block. It's where I want it to be and makes the exhaust be able to come out of the back of the truck so I can keep the muffler and everything on there and have a nice street truck without a stupid stack through the hood because a lot of places that's not even legal and it's fine for a race truck but it's not good for a daily driver truck. Something that's going to be towing all the time. Nobody wants to listen to that noise for thousands and thousands of miles on end. Or at least not when they get older. So I guess that, uh, that's the general overview of this project. A little machine work to do on these components to get them ready for going on. And there will be videos on that as time goes on. This is not job one high priority for me, so 
if this isn't a paying job, this is a my job. So it may be a little while before this occurs and you see these components again. But that gives you an introduction to what to look forward to and how this pans out. So be sure you go over to Area Diesel's page and not only watch the video on how they did this to see the difference of how CNC does it versus how I do it, but also be sure you subscribe to their channel and that helps them out, helps me out, and helps me to be able to make more content along this kind of line for you guys. And if you want to know the more technical background of how I chose this, uh, get into that in the future, but probably make sure that it works like I think it will first. That way I can back it up and say, well, yeah, if you do it like this, it'll perform as expected. So with that, hope everybody has a good Christmas. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.